how does your faith play into what you do here at the Capitol? Sure. Well, let me start by saying that faith and religion and lawmaking, that's very personal stuff. And I was reluctant to do this at first, but here we go. In the Jewish tradition, there are two concepts or directives that guide me, that inform me in relation to virtually every legislative decision I make as a member of the Texas House. The first, the first concept is tzedakah, which translates into charitable contributions, giving, helping individuals in need. And it's directly related to the biblical admonition to show, to demonstrate concern for the poor, especially in terms of providing basic necessities, including food, clothing, shelter. But Sadaka also signifies righteous behavior and is often paired or coupled the concept of justice. As Rabbi Savet has eloquently stated, and I'm going to quote, the Bible backed up its exhortations to assist the poor with laws and practices that gave poor people a claim to a share of society's wealth, that gave poor people a claim to a share of society's wealth, out of the Bible. The second concept that, that guides me in legislative decision making is tikkun olam, which translates into repairing the world, fixing the world, and is understood today to encompass both social action and social justice. In biblical writings, the, the Mishnah, tikkun olam refers directly to, and I'm going to quote again, social policy legislation that provides extra protection to those potentially at a disadvantage. To me, helping to repair the world and striving to ensure that there's social justice in society, which includes meaningful addressing, addressing health and human services needs of people who occasionally need assistance from government should be high on the list of priorities when legislators discuss and debate relevant funding and policy issues at the committee level as well as in the Texas House and the Texas Senate. Faith and lawmaking in the Jewish tradition. Think about it. Can I ask you any follow-ups? Sure. If you're comfortable. Um, this session, you've been here for quite a few years. Can you compare, I mean, did the mention of God or, or faith coming into the different debates stand out more this session than past? It did. It, it definitely did. I mean, it's, I've heard this so many, so many times that open carry and guns, it's God's given right. And some of us would shake our heads and go, what does that mean? What does that mean? God's given right. Yes, it, it came into play more so than, than ever. Does that diminish it? I mean, if, you, if we hear, heard it so much this session, does that diminish when people do bring it up? I think so. But everyone has the right to say whatever he or she wants in committees in the, the House chamber, and it doesn't bother me. It, it's almost akin to, in the invocation, 85% of the time when we convene, the invocation ends in and in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And if you think about it, that's not very inclusive to those of us who may not believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And I'm talking about Jewish people, are there any Muslims in the house? Probably not. Um, but anybody, and, and non-believers. And that's something that a, a couple of Jewish members in the past have said, isn't there any way we could have 
pastors, ministers end their invocation by saying, and in the name of the Lord, just something like that, which is more inclusive. And I'm, I'm used to that. It, it doesn't bother me at all. N nobody has a mean intention when they say, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And I actually think it's beautiful. You are in the minority. debate, discuss with other members who the majority are of a Christian faith. It, and, and then they talk about, you know, they rationalize issues, you know, definition of God. I don't, I don't get into discussions about that. There was one former member who said, Elliot, you know, you're probably the most religious member of this body, the most Christian. And I would say, Why, why would they say that? I think they look at what I advocate for, and it's always in the realm of low and moderate income people, poor people, minorities, people with disabilities, victims of domestic violence, women. It's always in relation to health and human services. I've been on the Human Services Committee since I took the oath the first time before most of your viewers were born. And, and I've been on the Public Health Committee for years and years, and that's my focus. I, I deal with housing issues and, of course, education, health, human services, welfare, what Sadaka and Takun Alam are all about. That's what I focus on. You mentioned, as we've heard quite a bit, I mean, it lays the foundation for your outlook on the work you do here. I mean, can you imagine, I guess, operating in a body where faith is absent? No, no, I, I cannot imagine that. And, and I, think that, that, I think that all the members are sincere in their beliefs. Of course I believe that. And sometimes I think that it, it, it comes up so much, especially in this session, that people begin to scratch their heads a little bit, a little bit. God's given right to this and to that. But it's fine. We, we all understand. We, we know what people are intending to convey to the membership. When it came to pre-K and it being called a godless environment? Not much. I took it with a grain of salt. I mean, to me, it, it makes no sense, a godless environment. But I don't, pay, I don't pay attention to that. And I work on trying to advocate what I think is in the best interest of people who occasionally need a little bit of help from their government. When it came to social issues and the fact that, you know, especially in recent weeks, same-sex marriage being at the forefront, there was a real effort this session to further write into state law limitations on that. Um, how does that factor into your beliefs? That's that wrong. That's blatantly wrong. And I said so in the chamber, and I worked to make sure that none of those hurtful amendments went on because I don't think that we should be creating more hurdles for people who have constitutional rights, whether we're talking about gay rights or voting rights. I, I think that we should comply with the way most people and members interpret the Constitution and the state laws and not add one more hurdle, one more obstacle to people being able to exercise their, I'm not going to say God-given rights, but their constitutional rights. Um, anything else to add that we didn't hit on? Of course, in these interviews, a lot of uh, members have talked about um, pro-life, uh, the death penalty. Your faith factor into your views on the death penalty? Uh, I, I would guess. I've, I've never seen what the Bible says, but I have worked on death penalty issues. I've called for a moratorium on the death penalty. I've never said to anyone whether I oppose or support the death penalty per se, but I have worked hard to make it more humane, to make the Board of Pardons and Paroles a little bit more transparent in their deliberations. Anything else to add that we didn't hit on that you feel comfortable touching on regarding the session and faith and what we heard? I'm fine. I think what I wanted to say, I said in relation to Sadaka and Takun Alam, and I'm pleased to answer questions, but no, thank you. We touched on guns briefly, but maybe you could say a bit more about the
that your your position is different than a lot of the other filmmakers that we've spoken to. Maybe you could elaborate on that because it was so brief. Yeah, <coughs> sure. sure. I mean, what what are your views? I mean, again, that was an issue we definitely heard as a God given right. Um, you know, to either carry a gun or bear arms when when they were generally speaking. Uh, what did you think when you heard that? I wasn't surprised at all. I was surprised by the choice of words, God-given right. Look, I voted against open carry and was very pleased to be able to be part of the effort to get an amendment on that bill which doesn't prohibit law enforcement from going up to someone and saying, you're openly carry. May I please see your concealed carry permit? There was a lot of objection from the other side to that, but we got it on and that's important. And when you talk about campus carry, I also have been adamantly opposed to that. And we worked hard to stop it, to kill it in the house. But when it was clear that we wouldn't be able to, we did succeed in getting a very important amendment onto that bill, which gives university presidents and executive officers on campuses the authority to declare gun-free zones. That makes something which was completely un palatable as far as many of us are concerned, including Chancellor McRaven of the University of Texas system, it makes it a little bit more acceptable that we know that there will be officially designated no-carry zones on campuses. Does faith factor into that issue? Well, it, it factors into it in terms of I would like to believe that I'm doing anything I can to protect lives, and in this case we're talking about the lives of students, faculty, and staff. I think we're going to have some problems because of the bill, but I think with that amendment, no gun zones, there'll be fewer bad incidents. Do you think carrying a gun and being a devout Christian are at odds with each other? Hey, I think we've covered a lot more than I had planned to talk about. Oh, okay. Sorry. I mean, I was just going to do this statement. Oh, okay. I didn't mean to. Well, I mean, if you want to, but I don't want to get into the, the faith stuff. Okay. Well, yeah, that's fine. The only okay. thing I would ask, um, just to kind of see, um, generally speaking, um, you know, as an outsider, the members are as far as an outsider of the Jewish faith, just briefly, I guess, overview, what are the general principles, uh, the, the two you mentioned? I've already done that. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. You're fine. Thank you.